I love these conferences, man, because they're all about identity. They really are. Because if I was up here just to teach you the miraculous, it would be great, and I could have you walk in it. But if I could teach you identity and it could stick in you, you'd walk in the miraculous forever. You'd actually never die. <laughs> Do you believe that Jesus said that he's the resurrection and the life? Do you believe that he also said, well, first of all, who's a believer in here? <laughs> all right, set up. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall never die. Do you believe that's true? Yeah. Okay, then you'll never die. Right? Amen. Because if you fear death, you're in trouble. You can't walk this out if you fear death. We're going to put this tent off one day, but we'll be with him, and it'll be great. Uh, how many guys, how many people in here ever heard of Keith Green? I didn't really, I, I didn't know who he was, and then I started to like write like songs and stuff, and they're all scripture, like the songs that I was writing, and just barely learning how to, barely playing acoustic because I don't know a whole lot about it, but I love to sing. And uh, he said, man, did you ever hear Keith Green? And I didn't know. Then this year, someone said, so I started to share messages on no compromise. And they said, you have to understand who Keith Green was. I'm like, what's the deal with this Keith Green guy? So I watched a documentary, and I cried. He had a vision of a church that walked like Jesus. I never read his book yet. I'm going to read that and cry again. <laughs> because I heard the book No Compromise. It's an amazing book. Has anybody read it? Okay, but it's good. It's worth the read. That's awesome. I'm not here to glorify Keith Green. I'm here to glorify Jesus. But he had something which is good. <clears throat> I learned from day one in this gospel that if, if I'm still alive or seeking glory from me, I'll never make it. From day one, I learned that I'm just a messenger. I'm delivering a package someone else paid for. From day one, like right away in the beginning. I learned that from my Bible. I learned that from a person. I learned it from my Bible. The Bible says that I carry in Jesus. And that when I deliver it, and people say, wow, you're awesome. I say, yeah, watch this. Look at how awesome he is. Because he wants to use you. Is this making any sense? I'm going to, I'll be really simple. I'm compassionate, and I'm very passionate about what I believe. So I'm probably going to get loud today. <laughs> Only because I believe that the passion is imparted through the message. I believe that God can stoke the fire in your heart in such a way that what I've walked out through revelatory truth in my life, what I've walked out, if I can communicate it correctly in the simplicity of the gospel and you can receive it in simplicity, it will produce the same fruit immediately in you that it's done in me. I believe that revelation is for that very thing. It's not for tickling your ears. I could care less about tickling your ears really I want to speak to your heart I'm actually gonna probably offend your mind to reveal your heart and that's okay because God offends the mind to reveal the heart but it's good because if he reveals your heart then all of a sudden <gasps> what yeah <sighs> you step right in so then my ceiling can become your floor if you can just get this thing in simplicity and receive so have an open heart and just be ready amen I know you guys are here. It's a different kind of conference. These conferences are here in doers. They're different, man. You can go from conference to conference to conference to conference and get filled up and filled up and filled up. And I'm not against conferences, man. I'm going to go to The Voice. I mean, I think that's an awesome... The people are amazing, man. It's good. I do conferences all the time. But you can become very constipated with knowledge and be very bound up. And the church needs a movement.
The church needs a Holy Spirit enema. And I'm not being mean, I'm being serious. Because we know way too much and walk out way too little. And it's not okay. Do you know that we talk about people that are in other churches and we talk about, I'm not saying you, I'm saying we as the body, as the whole. There's, a, there's this talk about Catholics and Presbyterians and Baptists and this and that and all kinds of backbiting, which is sin in the body of Christ. And we sit there and we beat up God's baby. It's not okay. We sit there and we tell them that they need to pray our prayer. They need to get born again. We have relatives in our own family that are Catholic and we say that they need to get saved and we think that we're saved. And we sit there and we say, well, they need to pray our prayer. They need to pray and they need to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Lord Jesus, this, that, and the other thing. And when really the Bible says that they believe that Jesus Christ was crucified for them, that they're already saved. The problem is we go after them because we need them to pray our sinner's prayer, which was made up less than 100 years ago, for them to believe our way. And the Bible says if you don't walk out what you already know, it's not so good for us. That's really polite. Because you look at it, it actually says to be cut in two. It's not okay. Luke 14, Luke 12, Luke 13, Luke 14 goes into it. It's red letters. They're going to be there when you stand before him. They're not going to be cut out of the Bible. He who knows the will of God and doesn't do it, it's not okay. Right? So let's stop looking at other denominations trying to get them to believe our way. And let's walk out what we say we know so that people want what we have. I am way against that whole denomination stuff, man. I, people say, well, what denomination are you? I say, I don't know. <laughs> well, what church do you go to? I'm just a member of the body of Christ, man. That's what people say. First thing, man, when people get healed or people get touched, they say, well, what church do you go to? Man, I'm just a member of the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah, but what religion? And what they mean is what denomination. So I say, you mean denomination? Yeah, 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 you Catholic, what are you? Man, I haven't figured it out yet. I just love Jesus. Wow. Because when I tell people that I'm a Baptist or I'm a Pentecostal or whatever, they put me into a box of Pentecostal that they've known or Baptist that they've known. And if someone comes up to me and says that they're a Baptist, I say, I love you, bless you, that's awesome. If someone comes up to me and says, well, I'm Catholic, so pray for people and they say, well, I'm Catholic. Are you Christian? No, I'm Catholic. But that's because that's what they've been taught. But Catholicism still believes in Jesus. And the Catholic Church is moving from just them reading in, in the Latin and reading in the different languages to actually being okay with people reading their own Bible. So let's get together and stop backbiting and devouring each other. It's the truth, man. What we need to do is actually come together in unity of faith because Jesus Christ, the head, isn't coming back till the body is in direct proportion to it. We say, well, Jesus, come back. Get me out of here. I need to get out of here. This is getting bad. God, I can't handle it anymore. Help! Get me out! Come on. Because life is eating our lunch. Dan preached it last night, man. We pre I don't know if you know it or not, but we preach the same thing. Different angle every time. We don't change. Why? Because this is what works. Because if identity isn't founded and grounded in you, you're still in it for you and you will perish. Selfishness is a root of sin, man. Selfishness is the nature of the devil. You can come into the church and be way more selfish than when you were outside because you've been taught that this is a bless me club. And you come in this thing for you to be blessed and you're in trouble. Because then when God doesn't show up, you think, well, God's not answering my prayers. I don't know where God is. You get that t-shirt that Dan talked about last night. Been there, done that, did that, didn't work for me, so I'm going to try this one. That's not working either. That's not working either. That's not working either. You can incorporate Jesus into your life and die at the end the same as your neighbor that's unsaved. You okay? It's early. It's early and I'm riled up, man. Because I've seen this produce fruit in people. And God's promised me that wherever I go, the fruit that is produced will remain. He's promised me. See, I believe that the gospel tells me whatever I ask in prayer, believing is mine. And I believe if you don't believe that, it doesn't matter. It's still mine. I believe that someone's free will that's dominated by hell and doesn't believe has no match for someone's free will that's dominated by truth and does. 
I believe we have way too much free will teaching and we give way, way too big of, way too big of, of, uh, of a place in people's lives for their free will. You ready? This one's good. It is. It's a devil, man. It's a sacred cow. I kill him. I eat him rare. I'm not being mean. I'm not popping off. But I'm telling you right now that what I'm about to share with you, I've seen walked out in action in my life, in my family. There's lots of people that have been taught that free will, that people have to make a choice. They have to choose. You can't choose for them, which is true. However, we've allowed free will to dominate God's word. We've allowed free will to be stronger than the word of God. Jesus said, when I return, will I find faith? Do you believe that our war is not against flesh and blood? Do you believe that our war is against principalities, demonic strongholds, and spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places? Then we don't wrestle against people. So the people in front of us aren't our enemy. Yes, no matter how they've acted, no matter what they've done, no matter what they say, no matter where they're at, no matter what they did to you, they're still not your enemy. Let it go. Don't sit there and say, well, they deserve this because you deserve hell. If you want what you deserve, go to hell. It's the truth of the gospel. None of us deserve heaven. It's unmerited favor. It's grace. God paid a price for us to enter in. So when you look at somebody that's hurt you, stop holding it against them because it's eating your lunch and you actually open it up for you to become a prisoner and captive. You want the tormentors off your back? Let it go. It's true, it's scripture. Everything that I share with you will be scriptural. Nothing that I share will be out of my own opinion. Did God say that our war is against people or against principalities? Right on. So we all know that it's in Ephesians. After it talks about the arm, it talks about we don't wrestle, but it talks about the armor, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the spirit, the shoes, gospel of peace, belt buckle of truth. Gird yourself up. Gird up your loins. Tuck your robes in. It's battle time. Put on your shoes. They have spikes so that you don't go back. You go forward. The more I preach this, the more passionate I get. So the word of God says that whatever I ask in prayer, believing, I'll have it. Matthew 21, Mark 11, it's true. Whatever I ask in prayer, believing, I'll have it. If I don't doubt. Doubt is double-mindedness. Faith is single eye. The lamp of the body is the eye. And if your eye is single, your whole body will be full of light. That word single in Matthew, look, I think it's in Matthew 5.22 when it talks about the lamp of the body being the eye. That word single isn't just a single vision. That word single actually is translated into two words and the two words are one voyage. If your eye is focused on one voyage, one mission, one way, your whole body's full of light. But if your eye is focused on other stuff, you're full of darkness. That means that there's a narrow way. It's him. Jesus is the way, not the way to heaven. The, God, the Bible doesn't say Jesus is the way to heaven. The Bible says Jesus is the way to the Father. I'm all over the place, but it's the same place. Are you with me? It's good. What you're hearing is my life in the secret place. What you're hearing right now is my life spent with him in quiet. What you're hearing is me reading the gospel saying, God, I don't want to just read this thing so that I can learn to preach. I want to read this thing so it becomes who I am. I don't want to speak and preach a good sermon and make people happy because they heard a good message. I want to reproduce the same thing you've reproduced in me. I want people to be able to walk and not live towards victory, but from it. We already won. The end of the book won't be changed. God's not going to lose the throne. He wins, period. 
And if you think for a second that we might be losing at present tense, you've already put yourself on defense and you cannot be offensive on defense. God, help me. Childlike faith. Sometimes we look at stuff and we say, well, I don't know about that. They did that to Jesus too. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, God. I'm asking you to do something with this word. Drive it in deep, God. Twist the sword and jam it up. Rend our hearts, God. Wreck us forever. Let us be transformed and just, man. In Jesus' name. The message that I shared on Friday night about being brand new, that old things pass away, all things become new, I shared part of it. But that is the most valuable place that you can be. And that has to be your beginning spot where old things are done. And when they whisper, it's the voice of a stranger. That has to be your foundation. That has to be where you stay. You live out of that place. You never go to another place and live out of that. You live out of that place. Because Satan will constantly whisper and try to get you to remember things that you wish you never did. And that's before Christ, but even in Christ, if you slip. It doesn't say when you do, it says if you do. If you slip, then you have an advocate who's faithful and just to cleanse you of everything. To wash you clean so that you start again. You don't spend three seconds in the slip. Three seconds is too long. When you, oh, immediately you repent and go. Don't you dare. Don't you dare drag your lip around. Three seconds is way too long. As soon as you know that it's wrong. Holy Spirit's not like silent in your life unless you've seared your conscience. And if you seared your conscience, just repent. There's not a problem with the fire. God's fire never goes off. Putting junk on it puts it out. So get the junk off the fire. Burn bright and let the whole world watch you burn. Amen, that's right. Oh, yeah. When Holy Spirit whispers to you and tells you something, obey immediately. Don't take five seconds. Take less than three seconds. Oh, man, I messed up. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. God, I just worship you. That's not me. God, thank you. better hear that Satan is a master at trickery he's cunning he prowls around like a lion we have a bigger and badder lion it's kinda like Mufasa and Scar Mufasa Ooh! Lion King Say it again, Mufasa. Oh! <laughs> if you saw the movie, I have kids, so. You guys all right? Yeah. We'll just have fun, okay? We'll just have fun, chill out, just have fun, laugh a little so Holy Spirit can. Yeah. It's serious, it's really how it works. We get really happy and then, oh! I'm recovering. Oh, I feel good again. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's how it works. Just a little side note. In Job 33, 15, it says, In deep sleep when men slumber upon their bed, the Lord seals up the instruction of the day and opens the ears when you sleep. We can't get it all during the day. We want to. If you're really hungry, you can bring it in. The seed goes in. Oh. And at night, when you go to sleep, make it a point. Say, Holy Spirit, you're going to be up all night. And I'm asking you to just open this up tonight as I sleep. So that you can learn 24 hours a day. 
because there's not enough time to learn in the in the 15 or whatever that you're or 20 even <laughs> sleep for four <laughs> it's a good it's a good idea I've done that since like since day one trying to give you points different things that that'll help you to grow <sighs> yeah parking on Ritter Road must be southbound I'm not supposed to read that am I Okay, sorry. All right, here's what I want to do. I want to play. I'm going to play a couple of songs, okay? And then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna share my heart a little more. Um, but the first song I'm gonna share is by Keith. Green. Yeah, Keith Green. So I just want you to listen to the lyrics of this song, and then I'm gonna play another song, which is from a Today artist. And I want you to listen to the lyrics of that song, okay? All right, man. Do you see, do you see all the people sinking down? Don't you care, don't you care? Are you gonna let them drown? God's calling. And you're the one How can you be so numb Not to care if they come You close your eyes And pretend the job's done Oh bless me Lord Bless me Lord You know it's all I ever hear no one aches, no one hurts, no one even sheds a tear. But he cries, he weeps, he bleeds, and he cares for your needs. And you just lay back and keep soaking it in. Can't you see it's such sin? Because he sends people to your door and you turn them away while you smile and say oh god bless you be at peace and all heaven just weeps because jesus came to your door you've left him out on the streets Open up, open up, and give yourself away. You see the need, you hear the cries, so how can you delay? God's calling, and you're the one, but like Jonah, you run. He's told you to speak, but you keep holding it in. Oh, can't you see it's such sin? The world is sleeping in the dark That the church just can't fight Cause it's asleep in the light How can you be so dead When you've been so well fed But Jesus rose from the grave You can't even get out of bed Jesus rose from the dead. Come on, get out of your bed. Come on, get out of your bed. La da, la da, la da, la la, la da, la la, la. How can you be so numb? Not to care if they come You close your eyes and pretend the job's done You close your eyes and pretend the job's done Don't close your eyes, don't pretend the job's done Oh, come away Come away, come away with 
me, my love. Oh, yes. Come away from this mess. Come away with me, my love. Do you see? Do you see? All the people sinking down. Don't you care? Don't you care? How you gonna let them drown? That is amazing. <laughs> Did you hear the lyrics? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, this is amazing. This next guy, his name's Lecrae. He's a rapper from today. He's a kingdom rapper. The song is called Go Hard or Go Home. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Sleep. It's like we sleep, but sinners sleep up when they sleep. 
so why can't we? So why can't we? The redeemed of the Lord act out what he said and make a scene for the Lord. Action cut, say what? Like we was the director, but you better get a grip like every second. That was awesome. I know that you might not be into rap, and I'm really sorry that you're not, but if you... Here's the deal. If, if you're not into that, that's great. But if your kids are, and you want to shun them from listening from that kind of music, you better be very careful. Because they will go outside of kingdom lyrics and go right into gangster rap, and you will lose your kids. And I'm being serious. That's amazing. Go hard or go home. Lecrae. L-E-C-R-A-E. Amazing, man. My daughter started listening to him and did a, did a dance. And it was awesome, man. Crazy. Man, I love that. <laughs> I just, first of all, I want to just thank you guys for coming to this conference. Because these are life changers. These are the ones that I, and I'm not beating up other conferences. I, I'm telling you right now that I've seen more fruit produced in this than any conference I've had a chance to be a part of. And it happens each month. So we do one each month. Which is amazing. And I have committed to doing these for life, man. Because my heart is to take people into an experience or to gear people up to go and walk the gospel out. Amen. Please don't think that if you don't have a word of knowledge that you can't walk the gospel out. A lot of people think that if they don't have a word of knowledge or if they don't have a prophecy that they're sitting back waiting for the Lord to give them some kind of word, to give them some kind of prophecy. We actually have people that, that think that you have to be led to approach people and I'm not beating up the fact that people are taught that way however I want to straighten that out okay that teaching comes out of the place where Jesus was at the five porches and everybody was sick there and Jesus only prayed for the one remember okay so he prayed for the one the man didn't even know who Jesus was. So he wasn't dependent upon Jesus' faith. I mean, he wasn't dependent upon Jesus' faith because he didn't know who he was. He said, do you want to be made well? He said, no one will take me. No one will get me in. When the water is stirred, someone gets in first. We'll pick up your mat and walk. The man picked up his mat and walked. And people are taught that there's a lot of people sick, but Jesus only went to the one. Here's the problem. We don't look at the whole picture. The whole picture was that Jesus had three years to accomplish all that he had to accomplish and he was headed to the cross. The people were trying to make him natural king. So Jesus went away, the, the scripture says, because of the multitudes. So he pulled out because they were trying to make him natural king. People say, well, Jesus is only led to the one. I heard this all the time, man. I hear this from people. I used to hear it when I used to pray for people. Well, brother, you've got to be careful. You can't just pray for everybody. I mean, you've got to be led. And it sounds, like, it sounds like it's a good teaching. But it's just not. Because you're not headed to the cross. You're carrying yours. You can go to all the porches. Now watch this. Here's what I tell people. You should write this down.
if you can look at somebody and see that Jesus didn't pay a price for them, then don't feel led. If you can look at somebody and say, well, Jesus didn't pay a price for that one, then don't feel led. That's a good standard to have in the being led thing. Did he pay a price for everybody or not? So if you can think in your heart, he didn't pay a price for that one, then don't feel led to him. Go to someone else. A lot of times it's not feeling led, it's feeling scared. Well, I'm just not feeling led, brother. Don't wait for God to land on you. Start to ask God for his heart, his compassion, so you can see people with his eyes. So you can hear people with his ears, instead of your ears and your eyes. Because God wants to give you his eyes. God wants to give you his heart. How are we going to get this on if you keep seeing people the way that you see them? Yeah? <laughs> Go out to a fishing store. Get a bunch of sinkers. Get one for each day. Change them out at night, but put one in your pocket. They're made of lead. Reach down, get a hold of that thing, grab lead, and get this thing on. That way you can feel lead and just live for Jesus. I've heard so much stuff that stops people from walking it out because they don't feel inspired to talk to somebody. Since when is it about your feelings? It's about what he said. He paid a price for everybody. You're not going to be me, but you can be the best you. I'm not here to make you like me. I can't make you like me. God only made one of me. My mom was really thankful for that when I was growing up. That was awesome, whatever that was. It's okay. It's just a phone. Are you with me? Yeah. Jesus you guys look really good you do I promise you you're the best he's got you know that God thinks that way about you you're the best he's got you're his number ones if you're a believer you're the best he's got doesn't matter where you've been Get over it. God already did. Just agree with him. He's your daddy. This is good. All right. I'm going to share a real quick testimony and I'm going to dive into something. Whatever he makes me dive into. I went to the gym this morning. I went to Gold's gym. And uh, because the hotel I'm staying at, they said you go to this gym, whatever. So I went over there and I walked in and went to the counter and, and paid my money to go into the gym and I walked past this guy, big guy. And I said, man, he's a big guy, you know. <laughs> I went and I did the elliptical or whatever. And God's speaking to me about this guy when I'm on there. See, if you pray to have God's heart and God's eyes and God's ears, he'll give you stuff. But the word of God says, go and preach the kingdom of God. In Matthew 10, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely receive, freely give. And in Luke 10, he says, go in whatever city you go to, go and heal the sick there. And then preach the kingdom. So either way, it's show and tell. No way out. So when we say, well, go to whatever city and heal the sick there, we say, well, which ones? Which ones do we feel led to? The disciples didn't ask that because they knew the word the. Go to whatever city and heal the sick there. Which ones? The. All of them. As many as you can touch in the time that you have. Redeem the time for the days are evil. Redeem the time. Redemption doesn't mean just buy back. Redemption means bring it back to the original reason it was created. God created time for him. And you're on his time, not your time. So redeeming the time brings bringing back every second. Every second for him and for kingdom use. Every second. Don't pray for God to take you out of your job. Don't do that. 
I don't care how dark your workplace is. People say, well, brother, I need to get another, pray for me because I need to get another job because my workplace is horrible. It's really bad. I need, I just need another job. No, you need your eye changed. Why? Because your workplace has become your potter because you've allowed what's around you to disrupt who you are inside. I'm not being mean. This is a reality check, man. You've allowed where you work to, to intimidate you. And I believe that timidity is direct proportion to carnality. I believe the reason why we're timid is because we're very carnal. I believe that we can kill carnality. I believe that the place of the divine nature and the carnal nature do not coexist together. They fight each other. And you can be in a place dominated by your divine nature where the carnal nature has to shut its mouth. But we spend a lot of time on the TV, on this and on that, entertaining and nurturing a carnal nature that Jesus paid a price to crush. And we say, well, Todd, how did you grow so quick? I cut that stuff out of my life. Why? Why would I sow something back in here that Jesus paid a price to crush? You have a very short time in this world to leave a legacy. You're not here for anything else but to leave a legacy of what one man or what woman could do that is completely yielded to God, that is surrendered to God. Don't make up statements like, well, brother, I can watch whatever I want. I can chew up the meat and spit out the bones. Knock it off and be a Christian. This isn't legalism. I'm telling you how bad do you want God. Well, watch. The measure of how bad, how bad you want God or the level of how bad you want God is the level of what you do with your life. Do you stand idle in front of a television show because you're tired from work and you need to relax? Come on, man. People don't like this. Tough. It's the gospel. How bad do you want God? Seek him. Don't sit in front of a television for two and a half hours trying to, like, relax from the day. Man, you'll fill yourself with Oprah Winfrey. Knock it off. <laughs> she renounced Jesus publicly and said, ah, I don't want anything to do with him. He's a jealous God. I won't serve a God like that. I'll serve me. I'm not beating her up because she's not my war. Because God's going to wreck her, but don't serve her. I'm not ashamed of this, man. I'm not ashamed of this gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation for those that believe. It's the power of God unto salvation. The salvation of your soul, Dan talked about last night. Your mind, will, and emotions. It's the end of your faith, actually. It's actually the finishing of your faith is the salvation of your soul. Your mind, will, and emotions coming back to the reason why God created it. God created you to think about Him and only Him. Having a single eye doesn't mean ministry comes below family. Family comes first and then ministry and then this and then that. That's not what a single eye means. A single eye means God and then God and then God and then God. Period. There's no separation of it. I don't do this and then do that. No, I'm not double-minded. It's God and then God and then God and then God. Because if I love God with everything I am, with all everything I am, which is the first commandment, I'll love myself because that God fills me. And if He loves me, He fills me. And if I love Him, He fills me. And then I can't help but to love myself and to love others because I just become love. But if your carnal nature is being nurtured, you can't become love because you're still nurturing what is fallen man. I'm not telling you to turn off the TV. I'm not telling you that football is bad. I'm telling you this. If it was your favorite team, and it was the last down, and your team was right on the goal line, and the Holy Spirit said, I want to spend time with you, what would you do? Check yourself and see and think. Well, Holy Spirit, you'll be there. I'll, I'll be there in a minute. Call it legalism. It's not. I don't even understand that stuff. I read my Bible and this is it. It says, don't be conformed, don't be squeezed, don't be pressed into the way the world is. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You're supposed to be a sacrifice. You're supposed to give up. It's not about you, it's about Him. Be passionate about something. Be passionate about God, man. You okay? 
I told you I was going to get louder probably. I lose people sometimes. I'm sorry. Kind of. I'm not here to seek glory from you. I'm really not. I will, I will encourage you. I will edify you. I will correct you in the gospel. Not correct you because it's what I want. I'll correct you out of love. I won't correct you and get you in a headlock and tell you bad and, and give you a noogie. Yeah. I will bring the word of God. It's a sword. It's truth. And it will cut out the stuff and leave you open hearted. Whoa. Because that's what we're supposed to do. Everywhere I go, I tell people. I told the people in Switzerland. I love what I do. I love it. I didn't try to get into full-time ministry. I didn't, man. I worked hard at my job. I loved it. I did, man. I was working at the ice company here in Harrisburg. I told you a little bit yesterday. It was the last job I had. And I got to see between 10 and 30 people healed every day on my job. It was awesome. Everywhere I went, I'd, draw, I'd run to an ice box, deliver ice. And I'd see people. Ha! Oh, they're everywhere. <laughs> I'd deliver ice to the front of stores. I go in the store to give the ticket to get a word of knowledge about the manager. I see someone limp. I chase them down. God would heal them. Pastors, people with their cars, gas pumps. What is going on? Man, I just heard in my heart that you've got a problem with your right hip. Yeah, I do. Who are you? Man, I'm just the ice guy. And they'd say, why are you asking me that? Man, you have that problem, right? Yeah, I do. Give me your hand. Why? Boom. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name. Hip, I command you be healed right now. And I'd say, check your hip. Oh my God, what did you do? It feels good. I say, God's alive. And he lives in me. And I'd preach the kingdom. And I'd share and I'd say, look, Jesus didn't pay a price just to get you to heaven. You know what they'd say? Sometimes they'd say this. Well, I know that. I'm a pastor. And I'd say, that's awesome. And I had pastors of all different denominations. It was weird. God would line it up. Pumping gas. And I'd approach them. And they'd say, well, I don't understand this. Because they preach that it's not for today. But it's too late. <laughs> but if I were to ask them if I could pray for them, they would say, no, I'm okay. So I don't need to ask you if I can pray for you. I don't need your permission. All I need is your hand. I'm really serious, man. I've seen thousands of people healed that way. In airports on airplanes, everywhere I go. Why? Because God wants to flow through me. He wants to touch people. He wants to flow through you the same way. All he wants is you to be willing. All he wants you to do is die to you. Stop nurturing you and start, start living from him. Not for him, from him. It's different. Abide in him. He who abides in me. What's it mean to abide in him? means that he's not just first place, but he's every place. Come on. No back burners. Don't just cry out to God because you need something. Get over that stuff, man. That's just demonic. <sighs> We've been taught prosperity messages. You know, just ask God. You've got to remind him about what you need. That's not in your Bible. People love this. So we've been taught prosperity messages because we're hurting. We're hurting financially. We're hurting in the finance area and stuff. And I'm not, I'm not entertaining a lack of finances. I'm not. What I am is I'm glorifying the very fact that in Matthew 6.33, he doesn't say seek first the finances. He doesn't even say seek first your kingdom. He doesn't say seek first the prayer to get stuff. He doesn't say come into the kingdom to get blessed. He says you come in to be a blessing. Uh. 
In Matthew 6, he talks about worry. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about that. Well, hey, listen, don't worry about this. The birds of the air, they don't reap or store yet. The Father knows, provides. Come on, the lilies of the field, they're beautiful. And he says, don't worry about what you wear, what you eat, what you'll eat. Doesn't mean don't go to work. Doesn't mean quit your job and trust God. Be very careful about that stuff. Well, brother, I'm in faith. We quit my, I just quit my job because I want to be in ministry. Knock it off. I'm protecting your heart right now. I've seen a lot of people that go to get into ministry full-time. And God didn't call them into full-time ministry. They were supposed to be working. You humble yourself. God will exalt you and you'll have no way out. It'll just be what is going to happen. I'm being serious. There's a lot of people that say, get me out of my job. No. The darker your job is, the more you belong there. Because you're supposed to be light and darkness. It doesn't matter. The darkness of your job shouldn't deter you. It's never the presence of darkness. It's the absence of light is the problem. Light belongs in the darkness, man. The darker it is, the brighter we shine. Unless you've got a basket on your head. It's the Bible. Take it up with Jesus. Come on, it is, right? It says nobody puts a basket on their head. They let the light shine. They put it on a hill. Shine the whole city. Imagine if you shine, the whole city saw you. That's what it was like when I worked at the ice company, man. It was awesome. I would meet all these Muslims and Hindus and people that own their own stores. I'd walk in, and the people at the company, they're nice, but they're not, they weren't Christian, the guys that worked and so they just did their job just to get out of there and get done they didn't really talk and communicate with the people except to get the ticket signed and get money I loved on these people man not that they're bad because they're not bad the, the guys that work there they're awesome man I love them I went there yesterday to see if they were there they, were, they weren't working I love them I freaked them out <laughs> I worked with them for a year and a half and they persecuted me like crazy that was great because the deeper people persecute you and the more they're mean to you, the deeper love's perfected in you. It's really fun. I'm not kidding. What can they do to you? Mock you? Hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, my buddy. How you doing? The blue shirt. Hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, man. Come here. You, come here. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw him. I haven't seen him in a long time. I know, man. I just want to kiss you and hug you. Sorry. I love you, man. Yeah. Love you. I saw your wife. I just want to say hi to you. I love you with all my heart, man. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I <laughs> get all messed up, sidetracked. The spirit's like wind. You don't know where he's going. <sighs> Lord Jesus, help me. Stay focused here. I'll get it. I will. So I'd go into these Muslim stores. And the guys never really talked to them. And I would talk to them. I'd go in. And I'd say, hey, how are you guys doing today? I have my job. My workplace. I love talking about this because I didn't press to get into full-time ministry. I actually was commissioned right here in this building. But Trisha King came here one day. And I did not want to go to that conference. I didn't know who she was. And she prophesied over me. And I was laid out on the ground. Wrecked. She prophesied over me and it was crazy. And then, then it started. But I did not press to get in. I would love my job, man. Your job's your mission field. If you can't handle it there, you're not going to do well in ministry, man. I'm not kidding you. Doesn't matter what you say. You can say whatever you want. If I get out of my job, then I'll be good in ministry. That's not the word of God. So as you do your job under the Lord and not for man. You're not working for men. You're working for Jesus. We need people that are really hard workers that are so heavenly minded that they're earthly amazing. It's so where on their job, they prophesy, they do the best job, and the worker, the people, the boss comes up, and they say, we don't understand what's going on, but how are you performing this way? You've never done this before. What is going on with you? Oh, it's Jesus. Ah. 
And then a couple more months go by, and they, they, they tolerate you. They don't understand what's going on, but you're supernaturally amazing, and you're performing better than others because you're not working for them. You're working for Jesus. Our perspective needs to shift, and we need to become a beautiful breed of people that worship Jesus on the job too. I'm telling you the truth. Why would God put you into place of ministry if you can't rule your own house? It's the gospel. Let your perspective. I'm not against people that are in ministry. I'm telling you, because I'm in it. But I'm telling you that this is the way. This will keep you, this will keep you clean. This will keep you good. Amen? Amen? All right. All right. The guy, at the, the guy at the gym this morning, I walked off the... the you with me still? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to go back to my job in a second, so just hold on. So I walked up to him and I said, dude, I said, when I walked past you this morning, I saw you sitting back here in your, in your, in your cubicle thing. He's a trainer, big guy. I said, when I walked past, I said, I, I've heard in my heart you had a problem with your shoulder. He said, well, I used to have a real bad problem because I sleep on it wrong. And I said, yeah, I said, but you also have a problem in your back. You have a disc problem in your back. It's, it's bad. It's on this side. He's like, yeah, dude. He goes, what's going on? I said, come here, dude. Just sit over here. I've got to show you something. He's like, all right. So I sat him down and prayed for him. God healed his back. and He freaked out. But he didn't just heal his back. He healed his heart. And I started to share with him what he's been through, what he's doing now, but what he really wants to do. I said, you're a personal trainer here. I said, and you like to train. I said, but you're kind of back in the cubicle because you don't deal well with, 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 certain people. I said, but here's what is on your heart. And I believe that you're not going to stay here. I believe you're going to be moving to California. And when you move to California, I believe that you're going to have your own personal training business and you're going to go into houses and train instead of being in a building and training. He goes, that's crazy, dude. That's actually what I want to do. I said, well, watch this. I said, it's going to be amazing. He said, I was just talking to my girlfriend because she's a dental, you know, dental assistant and she's doing this. And I said, you know what's really cool is when you talk about your girlfriend, I, I hear in my heart that she loves to work with children. So I believe she's going to go from dental assistant, graduate. She's going to go to orthodontic school. She's going to become an orthodontist. She's going to work with kids because she loves children. He goes, this is nuts. <laughs> I said, this is the gospel. He goes, this is crazy. Man, you don't even know me. I said, yeah, but God does. And I sat down with him and I talked to him for about 15 minutes. Just loved on him. He goes, you know, I love this. He goes, you know what? He goes, it's hard for me to look people in the eyes. He goes, but you're real. He goes, there's something in your eyes that you're real. I don't look people in the eyes, but I can look you right in your eyes and I know you're real. Why? Because the eye is the lamp of the body. People understand if you're in this thing for you or if you're in this thing from him. Especially kids. They'll see right through you, man. Right through you. You cannot be in this thing for you. You have to be in this thing from him. I didn't corner him or get him to pray my prayer. People say, would you get him saved, brother? I hear that all the time. Would you get, I understand you got him healed, but did you get him saved? I have to be careful how I address this one because I'm not a, I'm about souls man I'm about bringing people into the kingdom but I believe our motivation factor has been to get people to pray a prayer instead of to love people I believe that our motivation has been to go out there and get people to pray our prayer and leave them go and walk away from them and go and get someone else to pray our prayer come back and share numbers with people we've made it a numbers game instead of about a love life so I'm all about souls, and I've seen many people come right into the kingdom because they say, what is this? I've got to have this. This is crazy. I want this. Why would people want the Christ in you if they can't even see it? Why would people want what you say you have if they can't even see it in you? They don't want it. That's why they're not banging down doors to get in. Come on. Go and preach. Go and heal them. Go and preach. Go and heal them. Go and do it. Go. Go is two-thirds of God. Go. Do it already. 
This gospel is an as-you-go gospel. That's why, see, a lot of times people see the videos on TV or on the videos on CBN or, or whatever, and they see it, and they say, Todd White, street evangelist. You can't get videos into stores really easy because you have to go through all kinds of legality things to get the video cameras inside of a Walmart or inside of a Gold's Gym or inside of a LA Fitness or inside of a, a store. But if you could, it'd be awesome. But people say, street evangelist. You're not here to do street evangelism. You're here to become a Christian. Yeah. One that's Christ-like. One that walks like Christ. One that is walking a little anointed one. Christian means Christian. That's what it means. You're a little Christ-like one. A little anointed one. A little one smeared with God. Yeah. One that's smeared with the same Holy Ghost that Jesus was smeared with. One that is reliant upon the Holy Spirit just like Jesus was. Where you can walk. What did Jesus? Jesus didn't just rely upon a gifting. We teach too much about gifting. It's not about gifting. I'm not against gifts. But if you seek gifting, you won't walk in a believer priesthood. You'll walk in a gifting. And a gifting doesn't keep you clean. The giver does. Come on. Do you know that you can prophesy and heal the sick and do all kinds of amazing things and stand before him and him say, see ya? Which is the truth. It says, not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, on that day will enter in. And they'll say, well, didn't we prophesy? Didn't we heal the sick? Didn't we, didn't we cast out demons? Lord, we did it all in your name. Away from me, you who regarded lawlessness. There's a place where we can walk in sonship. And the miraculous flows out of sonship. And it keeps you clean. Because you're hooked up to the source. See, God will flow through a gifting because he loves people. But it's better if he flows through a believer priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy, chosen generation. One that's set apart. That's not in it for them, but in it from him. Did Jesus walk in just the gift of prophecy? Did he walk in just a word of knowledge? Look, Jesus walked in the sevenfold spirit of God. He did. And that same, the Bible says in Romans 8, 11, that same Holy Spirit. Same one. No differences. Same one. Yeah, but, no, buts and what ifs are devils, get them out. Yeah, buts and what ifs are devils, man. They are, they limit God. Yeah, I know that's what God says, but, devil. I'm serious. Yeah, I know that's what you're saying, but if you went through what I went, devil, it is. It's allowing your past to dominate your present. It's allowing people to be your potter. Come on, when you squeeze an orange, what kind of juice comes out? When you squeeze an apple, what kind of juice comes out? If I squeezed an orange into a cup and you drank it and it was apple juice, you would spit it out. Why isn't it strange when you squeeze a Christian, everything but Jesus comes out? Come on, think about it. When stuff's on, when pressure's on, what's in you comes out. Let's not be ugly when we're squeezed. What if you were at a place where you were so confident in God, where you would pray, God, I'm asking you to break anything in my life that needs broken and know who's breaking you. Because if God comes to break, it's not to hurt you, it's to glorify Him and to edify you. If God comes to clip and to prune it so that you bear more fruit, it's not so you remain the same and it's not to hurt you and bum you out. It's to edify, encourage, and to build Christ in you so that the Christ in you is dominant. Stop praying prayers like, Oh Lord, I know my spirit's willing, but my flesh is weak. We take that scripture and we utilize that and we emphasize weakness of flesh. 
The only place that flesh has is a place to die. What about praying prayers like, Lord, I thank you so much that you've given me Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you're the dominant factor in my life, and I just love you, and I give you complete reign in my life. Holy Spirit, you're my best friend, and I thank you that you're going to build my spirit, because even though I'm a small man in stature, my spirit man can be a giant. So God, I'm asking you to grow up my spirit into all things. God, because you've given me everything according to life and godliness. God, you told me to seat my, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. I'm dead here, but I'm alive in there. God, I'm asking you right now to have dominance over my spirit. Spirit, you're in dominance. You're in control. Flesh, sit down, shut up. What if we prayed that stuff? I pray that stuff. I do. Come on. Ah. You guys all right? Still with me? Some of you are looking at me like, (laughs) I love you. I really do. You don't want to hear something funny? It's not really funny, but it's kind of funny. I meet people, you know, and I talk to them like the guy this morning, you know, Greg was his name. He's coming here tomorrow. I said to him, I said, Greg, I said, I just want to tell you something, man. I love you, bro. In about three minutes of me talking to him, he looked at me and he said, you really do. I said, I do, man. You know, I've been with people and I sit with them on the planes and stuff and I talk to them and I tell them, they say, well, I say, well, you know, we start conversation. I say, what do you do? And they say, well, I'm in business, this, that, and the other thing. And they say, well, what do you do? I said, I love people. <laughs> I do. I love people for a living. It's awesome. And people get uncomfortable. And they say, well, ex- explain what you mean. And I've had so many experiences on planes, man, of people that are trapped at 30,000 feet in a steel tube (laughs) that they can't go anywhere. They are going to hear the gospel. They're going to, if they don't hear it because they don't want to talk to me, they're going to hear it because the airline people have to walk by me. And they're going to get healed and prophesied over. And people around me, they're trying to read their newspapers and stuff. Bury their head in their books and their newspapers. That doesn't matter. Why would I be afraid of something that I say I love? The only reason that I would be afraid is if I love my own life. What can they do to me? What can people do? Come on. Greg went and told all the people at Gold when I was walking in, when I was walking around, they were looking, they were all looking at me. When you go into a restaurant and you pray for somebody, or you bless somebody, all the other waitresses, they talk. They do. They go back in the back and they talk, and the other people are peeping their head out, looking and seeing the table. They'll even walk slow by the table, waiting for a word. I'm serious. You guys got the kingdom inside of you. Don't keep it dormant like a lake. You're supposed to flow like rivers, man. People around you are supposed to be squash, 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 squash. They're supposed to get soaked. They're supposed to have tidal waves of glory. And it's not just a mist coming into the building. I'm not against that. That's awesome. But it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory. Christ coming out of you is the manifestation of that hope revealed. It's not about Christ staying in you. Heaven didn't just get you saved for you. It's not about God. I can't wait till you come back. Jesus, my job is getting worse. Help me get out of here. This is crazy. My family's being mean. Everybody around me, my world is collapsing. Jesus, come back to heaven with me and to hell with the world. It's not about that. It's about God. I thank you so much that you've repossessed what Satan tried to forfeit. This is so amazing, God. I thank you that you saved me from me. Now, God, I'm asking you to train me up as a son so that I can walk in sonship. God, you said that I'm a joint heir and I have no idea what I'm an heir of. Holy Spirit, I give you complete permission to dominate my thoughts, to wreck the world around me in love. 
so that everywhere I go, the Spirit has dominance. Ah, pray that way once. Well, that's too bold for me. Knock it off. It's not. It's good to pray Scripture. It's good to pray the Word of God. It is. God, I thank you so much. You set me free from me. Just say that a lot. Thank you, God, you set me free from me. Listen, man, lots of times we get into situations and we're completely uncomfortable because you're supposed to be. Holy Spirit is the comforter. You're supposed to be uncomfortable. God said they're going to be very uncomfortable, so I'm going to give them a comforter. Come on! Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to go away. Told them a bunch. I'm going. I'm out of here soon. I'm going. And they're bummed out. Oh. Dude, you're the best thing that ever happened to us. You're not going? Peter tried that. That didn't work out well. You're the best thing. Can you throw me one of them waters? Nope. Good throw. Thank you. He said, I'm going to go away. It'd do you good to read the whole Bible, but I, I've been stuck in John 14, 15, 16, 17 for a while. That's really good. It's all really good, but it's red letters. <sighs> he said, nevertheless, it's going to be better for you that I go away. Which means that the absence of Jesus is going to be better than the presence of Jesus. And that seemed weird. You know, I hear a lot of talk about this orphan spirit. Because we don't believe the word. Because Jesus said, I won't leave you as orphans. I will not. If he said he will not, it means he wouldn't. Right? So you're not an orphan, you're a son. It's because of a lack of a sonship identity that we walk around as orphans. But when you're a son, you're not an orphan, you're a son. If you're a daughter, you're a son, and that's weird. It is. Me in a wedding dress is weirder. Like Dan says, I'm going to go bat my eyes down the aisle. It's funny, man. You've never seen him act it out. It's hilarious, dude. Oh, king. <laughs> so funny. You guys, man, get the video if you can find it. I don't know what it is, but it's hilarious. He said, it's going to be better for you that I go away. Why? Because the presence of me with you is good, and Holy Spirit with you is good, but in that day, he'll be in you. That will be different, because then you're not going to just walk with me, but I'm going to walk in you. And when I walk in you, you're going to walk just like me, because you can't do it in your own strength. You keep messing up. Peter, as a matter of fact, you're going to deny me. No. Yeah. But when the Holy Ghost comes... It's going to be good. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Three times. Why? Restoration. Peter preached a sermon the first day that he got born again. Or got filled with the Holy Ghost. Because I believe they got born again when Jesus breathed on them. And they received the Holy Ghost. When he breathed on him. And then he said, go and wait. So we think that there's a one-time touch. Now there's many fillings. Are you with me? Simple, but I'm kind of hitting little things. Is this helping at all? So Peter gets filled, preached the first message. Filled with the Holy Ghost where nevertheless it'll be to your advantage that I go away because what's in me is going to be in you Peter gets filled preaches the first message and they freak out oh my gosh what should we do we killed him just wish you didn't we make it harder like go through jump through hoops go through years of stuff 
before we get to a place where we're finally ready. No, just wish you didn't. Repent. Change the way you think. Believe and be baptized. It'll be good. Let's just get this thing on. What should we do? Oh, just wish you didn't. Repent. That's it. Repent means change the way you think. Wish you never did it. It's easy. It's simple. Stop thinking so much. Stop allowing your brain to get in the way. It's simple. Wish you didn't. You're going this way. Oh my gosh, I was messing up. Yay. Now I'm on track. Period. Why would you go through years and years of stuff to get to that place when all it is is this? Woo! Because our minds have become God and it's not. Your emotions. No, that's why that thing needs salvation. <sighs> Amen? Amen? You guys okay? Yes. All right. I'm scattering, man. I'm hitting a lot of stuff. But I'm doing better. <laughs> it is good. It is. All right. Hmm. Did you ever hear that song um, that Jesus culture does? Oh, Lord, you're beautiful. Keith Green did it first. <laughs> it is. Your face is all I see. Come on. And when your eyes are on this child, your grace bounds to me. Is that so good? Woo! When it talks about and when I'm doing good, help me to never see the crown. Just help me, Lord, to live it. Just to live it out. Come on. I don't need to see a crown. I just need to live it now. When I'm doing good, God, don't let me see the crown. It's not about that. For my reward is bringing glory to you. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> I heard that the first time I cried. I'm on the, on the elliptical at my exercise. I'm like, oh my God. Now I'm in the exercise room. There's people in there. I'm like, it's awesome. Jesus. People are like. <laughs> you can infect a whole room. You can. You can be on a plane and release the kingdom and infect the whole plane. You can. Man, I was on the plane back from Switzerland. I got 10 hours on the, second, on the first plane. Long time. Locked in a steel tube. Awesome. Going and praying and airline attendants are getting healed. Freaked out, telling other ones, and they're going to get me. Why? Because the kingdom's at hand. The kingdom's at hand. All you've got to do is be obedient. All you've got to do is walk this out. All you've got to do is look for one. Don't wait for a word of knowledge. Look for somebody that's hurting. If you see somebody limping, they're a target. For the love of God. If you see a cast, they're a target. If you see a wheelchair, they're a target for the love of God. If you're in a store and you go to a cash register and the lady's taking your money and she's, she's not having a good day, she's a target. Even if she's having a good day, she's a target. Tell her, say, are you okay today? No, I can't wait to leave here. But my time's almost over. I'm almost out of here. Wow, that's awesome. You're gonna be, you've been here all day? No, I've only been here for a couple hours. I work part-time, but this really, people work on my nerves. I hear it all the time. Wow. Let me see your hand. Why? <sighs> Father, I thank you in Jesus' name, God. And she turns six shades of red. And I don't look at her. I just close my eyes and pray. People say, don't close your eyes and pray, brother. You might get hit. <laughs> Did you ever hear that? Be careful about praying and closing your eyes. If you're taught evangelism when you're going out in the street or you're going somewhere and you're evangelizing, they say, don't ever close your eyes. You want to be careful. So what if you get hit? If you're worried about it, it's still about you. Well, you're going to use wisdom. That's worldly. That's not godly. Godly's turn your cheek. 
We don't think that way because we're still in self-preservation mode. Come on. Some of you need to smile at me. You don't. When I was in Switzerland, I preached and the people were like, not that that was bad. And I was just joking with them and I said, are you guys happy about Jesus? Yes. And it was cool. I said, send a message to your face. And I was only joking. I wasn't being mean. I really wasn't. And they just looked at me. It took a whole session to get through that, to get to the next one until people started breaking. Started to preach the love of God, righteousness. They're very, what I've found over there is very condemning, very, very, uh, very stoic, but very like, very motivated by works. Like they got to perform, very performance. And once they realize they don't have to perform, that they're accepted. There's this big thing on the earth right now. It's this big name, spirit of rejection. It's like, man, that's twisted. You're not rejected. You're accepted. I don't care if you were rejected when you were in the womb. Life came from God. You were planned out by God. I don't care how you came into the world. It doesn't even matter. I, listen, I'm not glorifying rape because it's horrible. But if you were the result of a rape, you weren't, you weren't brought in through rejection. All life comes from God. I don't care if you were conceived out of wedlock. All life comes from God. You're accepted because God planned you out. God knit you in your mother's womb. You've been knit in your mama's womb. You are accepted in the beloved. You're accepted. Get over being rejected already. Oh, I'm serious, man. I'll hit this again hard now, again. Rejection is from the devil. The only one that's been rejected in the whole world is Satan and his devils. The only one in the whole universe that's been rejected is Satan and his. That's it. And you are not his. You are accepted in the beloved. You are not rejected. If you go out and pray for people for you, you will be rejected by them. But if you go out and pray for people from him, you can't reject that because love never fails. If I go out to pray for somebody today and I go to lay my hands on them and pray for them and they say no, if a feeling of rejection comes, it's because you prayed for you and not from him. If I approach people for me, you have the right to reject me. But if I approach you from him, you can't reject me because I'm coming. <laughs> I'm so serious. I press people. I used to say, people would say no. No, I don't want you to pray for me. And I'd say, well, well, now I say, well, why not? Because I don't believe in that. Really? Why not? Well, when I was... And they let you have it. I've had people on the street where I talk to them on the sidewalk and say, ma'am, you have some... Word of knowledge. You've got some problems in your back. It's really giving you pain. Yeah? Why do you care? Well, because I love you. What? I do. I, I want to pray for you. No, you can't pray for me. I don't believe in that. And they walk away. And I walk after them. I said, well, look. God didn't tell me that to play a game. You can walk. You don't even have to look at me. And I'm praying your back's getting healed right now. What if they turn around and hit me? So I take one for the team. I'm serious, man. I've been in some hostile situations with some angry people. Just keep smiling. I'm so serious. What do we really fear? Come on, this is what this whole thing's about. It's building your confidence in righteousness. Building your life and identity. Sharing what it could truly be like for you to walk like Christ. Christ wasn't intimidated. They were going to stone him a bunch, man. And even they were going to stone him. He slipped through. How did that happen? I don't know, but that's cool. So what if... Do you guys know who David Hogan is? 
I hear some of those testimonies that he, ta he shares, and I just cry. Yeah. Or they disappear in the midst of the people that are coming to kill him. They're like disappeared, but standing right there. Is it possible for us to be so hidden in his presence? For us to be so in love with God? For us to have laid down our life, for it not to be about us? That we can stand in the midst of our enemies. And God will prepare a table for us right there because it's a good place to eat. Can we be in such a place where we're so lacking a love for our own life? You cannot overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. You have to love not your own life unto death. Watch this. We're afraid to love not our own life unto rejection. That's ridiculous, man. Which shows that you're really in it for you. Well, they hurt me. Well, I got hurt. Well, I get over you. I'm not being uncompassionate. I'm being serious. It's time we get over the little kid stuff. Come on. You're a son. You're amazing. God has great value in you. Heaven went bankrupt to get you back. Heaven gave up everything just to regain you and have you be a son again. Jesus would have given up everything just to get you back. Just one person, he would have gave it all up just for you. You're that important to God. But because we haven't been that important to people, we can't relate. And when you act that way in rejection and this and that, you serve the God of this world and not the God that you're supposed to, big G. to pray. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name, God, I'm asking you to make this word real and alive in us. That people would be way more confident today than yesterday. Holy Spirit just said they are. <laughs> That's so good. I'm not kidding, man. When you, well, I promise, today when you go out, it'll be totally different. I'm so serious. So different. So different. Because you'll walk out. How many people already feel that in their, in their hearts? I promise, this, this does something inside of you. Just does. God said, preach out of who you are. Don't ever preach a message for people to hear you. You preach out of who you are and who you've become. And it'll produce life in everyone that hears you. So if your ears are open, it's in you. And watch this. The Bible says, whatever I ask in prayer believing, I'll have it if I don't doubt. And I didn't doubt for every one of you to walk the same way that I've walked. So now that same fruit is going to be produced in you whether you believe it or not. Because you're not getting out of this. You're not. I promise. I don't care how passionate you are or how screaming out you are. You're not getting out of this. You can be as laid back and as cool and calm. You can be 85 year olds and hear this message on a CD and you're getting it too. God's told me to reproduce, man, to create an army of bold warriors that are ruled in righteousness, that the scepter of their throne is the same thing. The scepter is righteousness. Lawlessness is something that we hate. No compromise in this generation. A generation that would walk in boldness, that would walk in authority because they know who their daddy is. Once it would walk into a grocery store and the grocery store would turn their heads and say, who is this one? What is going on in them? Man, if Charles Finney can do it back then, why can't we do it today? If Charles Finney can walk into a factory and people would bow and cry and shake because the presence of God, what was it? He walked in the fear of the Lord. He walked in such the fear of the Lord where people were like, oh my gosh, I've got to... Well, I got to get right in here. I've been in front of people, man. I've been around people where I've prayed and just touched the tip of this thing. Just touched it. Where I'm around people and they're, they're like, oh my gosh, I need to repent. I put my cigarette out. I need to do this. I need to do that. And I didn't say a word to them. I just loved them and told them that God loves them. They're amazing. Man, I had this guy. I walked down the street and just, I jumped out of the car actually because I saw him limping on a crutch. I went down. I said, dude. People I'm driving with are like, where did he go? <laughs> Doesn't matter, we're going slow. I said, stop. And I'd jump out of the car and I'd run. Hey man, what's going on with you? With you? Why are you on a crutch? 
man, I, I, I really hurt my, my ankle, man. I messed it up really bad. And I don't, I don't know, man. I need another surgery. Man, just, just, just hold still. Don't move, okay? All right, what are you going to do? I put my hands on his ankle and said, God, I thank you that you love him so much that you'd get me out of a car in a city that I don't even belong to. You would just walk up and love this guy right here in the midst of this city, God. You love him so much. And he checked his ankle and said, man, what's going on? Man, it's good. That's, who are you? I'm just a Christian. Man, where are you from? From Pennsylvania. What are you doing here? I said, I was driving down the street and I saw you and had to run to you. <laughs> Simple. It's the truth. Why? Because God loves you. He goes, man, I need to be real right now. Took a cigarette out of his mouth, put it on the ground, stepped it out. Said, I need to repent, man. I've been running from God. I need to get... I need to get right, man, because this ain't right, man. I've been running. I didn't tell him that. The love of God did. Why? Because it's the love of God that brings people to repentance. It's not your rebuke. You've got to be careful and get this thing on with God. Stop pointing out people's faults and start to love people so that they realize there's a God that loves them. That there's a God that gave up everything just to get them back. You'll change situations. Stop looking at people like that. Start looking at them with the heart of love. It's the love of God that leads people to repentance. It's not you. It's the love of God. And if you become the love of God, you will lead people to repentance. That's where people's hearts are changed. The love of God. It's a lack of receiving the love of God that enables someone's heart to stay the same. But when you walk on the scene and you walk in the love of God, they have no choice but to get their heart right with God. What if we believe that? It's the gospel. Man, we got so many methods. This is not a formula. It's not a method. The only formula I can tell you is that when you go in the secret place, you're not there to go ahead and seek God for power. You're there to become love. You're there to become the love of God. You're not in the secret place. God, give me your power. Show me your power. Show me your power. That's not why we go there. We go there to become intimate with Him so He can be our daddy, so we can be like God, so we can be just like our dad. So that when we walk, God will see us in the secret place, reward us in the open. What do we get rewarded with? Him. More of Him. More love. And all of a sudden, people see your life and they're like, man, what is that? People come up to me. I've had people, man, when I worked at, at jobs and they would run up to me. I, I would pray for them. They'd run back up to me. I remember a guy in the McDonald's. I prayed for him. He was limping in. Prayed for him and he got healed. I told him how much God loved him. I prophesied over his life, right? He went and ate his food and I'm outside getting my job done, doing what I have to do. He comes up to me. He goes, man, he goes, what is this? Because he was in a hurry to go. Some people, I, I want to pray for him and they're in a hurry. Well, hurry up. I, that, I don't care about that. They don't see. I do. Why would I allow what they don't see to influence what I do see? Come on, they're not my potter. God is. And the kingdom of God's at hand. It's right here. It's in me, upon me, around me. It dominates everywhere I go. It dominates. It goes in before me. It goes after me. It's above me and beneath me. If I'm sitting in the seat next to you, you've got kingdom on you. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter who you serve. I don't care if you serve yourself. That's going to end. Why can't we have confidence like that? I'm not just popping off. I'm talking about the Bible. The one we say we believe. The Word of God. We say we believe. We read lots of books about this and about that and about this. But my gosh, the Bible is real. Amen. I understand you've got to read books, especially if you're in a school. You're going to read a lot of books. Bless you. I'm telling you, that's great, but make sure that you leave room for interpretation through Holy Spirit. Make sure that you leave that door open, man, because that's where it all comes from. Are you getting anything out of this? I am encouraged inside. I'm not kidding. I feel like I get born again again every time I preach. Why? Because it gets deeper in me, deeper in me. It does. Where I say stuff that I don't even know what I said. Because God is deeper in me. And he's coming out more profuse. And I have to say, whoa, whoa, that was awesome. I'll just get the CD and hear it later. 
Because sometimes there's so much stuff I don't, I don't catch it. But it's good. I haven't picked up my Bible, but I carry it with me and it's falling apart. But everything I've shared with you is scripture. Because it's in me. Oh, yay. <laughs> nah. You doing good? Everybody? Who's not? Just open your heart, man. You will, I promise. I, I promise. Jesus, you're good. Holy Lord God, you are good. And your mercy has made me who I am. Holy Lord God, you are good, and your love endures forever. Holy, holy. Your love endures forever. Holy Lord God, you created me to be a son. You have brought back to original value what the thief tried to steal, what the thief tried to steal. I have put off the old man I used to be. He is dead and under blood. I will walk like a you. I will talk like a you. I will walk in boldness through righteousness. I will not bow down. I will not bow down to anyone but you. To anyone but you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus. You're alive in me. Whoa, Jesus, whoa, sweet Jesus, have your way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Holy Lord, holy God, there is none like you. There is none like you. Holy Lord, my God, God of righteousness, there is none like you. Oh, holy God, holy Lamb of God, there is none worthy but you. And now you live in us, now you've made us right, now we're worthy, Lord, now we're worthy, Lord, now we're worthy, Lord, cause you live in us. Yeah, you're no longer a sinner saved by grace. You were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You didn't pass in between and stop there. You went from darkness to light, period. You're not a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner saved by grace. You become a saint in the eyes of the Father. 
God says that you're a saint. You're no longer worthless. You're worth it. Come on. Jesus didn't pay such a high price for trash. He didn't pay such a high price just to get you forgiven. He paid a high price because we didn't even look like who we're created to look like. He paid a price to get sin off of us so that we could become sons again. Because God wanted sons. He wanted sons. He wanted family. And you are that one. You're the family of God. You're a son. You're worth it. You're not worthless. That's trash. The devil's worthless. He's a worm, cursed to crawl on his belly. The serpent crawling on his belly all the days of his life. Get off your belly unless you're praying. It has nothing to do with who you are. You're worth it. You are so worth the blood of Jesus. Knock it off with I'm not worth anything. Cut it out. Your worth doesn't come from people. Your worth comes from God. And God gave up heaven to get you back. So you're worth the blood of Jesus. Don't sit there and entertain that lie. I'm worthless. I'm not worth anything. Knock it off. You're saying the blood of Jesus isn't good enough and it didn't, wasn't a high enough price. There's got to be something better. No, it's finished. You're a son. You're blood bought. You've been purchased by blood, not silver or gold. You're not your own vessel. You're God's. God's vessel. God's temple. God paid high price for you. He paid blood for you. You're amazing. You're a son. Say, I'm a son. I'm a son. God paid a high price for me. I am worth it. I am worth the blood of Jesus. I am not worthless. Satan is worthless. He's not my daddy. God's my daddy. I won't ever think that again. I won't think like the devil anymore. Satan is after my soul. He can't dethrone God, but he's trying to dethrone God from my soul. Yay. Yeah. You want to hear something funny? When you go into a town and you look for like covet, covens and, and witches and, and just the cults, you look in the high places because they usually go up high because they want to be above. They want to be above. Yeah. Right? So watch this. Satan is depressed. He's angry. He's bitter. He's in unforgiveness. He's worthless. There's no chance of repentance. There's no hope. He's hopeless. He's eternally cut off. So anytime you feel any of that stuff in you, depressed, worthless, angry, bitter, all that stuff, Satan is reproducing himself in your soul. Do you understand that's the nature of the very enemy of God? When you think that way, you think like God's enemy. Satan is not your daddy. You've been created by God, but cultivated by the enemy. You were created by God, but since day one, we've been cultivated by the very enemy of God. Our minds have been cultivated by the God of this world. And that stuff needs cut off and grafted out, man. Completely severed. Completely knocked out, man. What if we all thought this way all the time? What if a depressive thought came and you didn't rebuke it, you didn't command it to get behind you? You said, Father, I thank you so much. That's the enemy. I'm 100% opposite. You're good, God. What if, we, what if we did that? What if when Satan touched you, he took a risk every time he touched you? What if he knew what kind of risk he was taking? Because he knows what kind of risk, but he's very sure that he can poke you and you'll respond just like you've always responded. If he touches you, He'll push you away from God. He takes a risk because when he touches you, it could put you closer to relationship with God. Not put you, but push you. What if every time he touched you, you went closer to God? What if every time he poked you, you didn't rebuke him, you just stood, thank God for who you really are? What if every time he touched you, boom, he touched you and you went, oh God, thank you. <sighs> Listen. I believe when Jesus was crucified, when he went down into hell for three days and paid for you. I believe on that third day, I believe the Holy Ghost came down in there and shined the place up. I believe light came into darkness. I don't believe darkness like did anything. I don't believe Holy Ghost suffered any bite marks at all. 
I don't believe he said, Gabriel, get my front. Michael, get my back. I'm going in to get him. Watch my back. I don't think so. Light came into hell and said, here's the keys. Come on, let's go. I believe that. And I believe that Satan was pounded and done and finished. And he knew it. And I believe that Satan got everybody because they were all, all hell was, oh, no. And they said, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Everybody, come here. Come on. And everybody huddled together. And Satan said, guys, this is the way it's going to be. Listen, we can't defeat God, but we can defeat God from ever getting into the soul of man. So listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep them self-centered, self-focused. We're going to make it all about them. We'll get them depressed. We'll get them selfish. We'll get them all about them. Guys, this is going to be easy. We can't defeat God, but we can defeat man. It's all about selfishness. Come on, they'll take on our very nature. Ready? Break! So that's what they do. So that's what an imp is designed to do. And so what they do is you're walking, and all of a sudden... You hear this voice. It's not really a voice audibly, but a thought that you think. That you wish you didn't think. But it comes in. And you go, oh, what was that? Oh, Lord God, forgive me, God, again. Not good. Because you've already asked him to forgive you. He forgave you, and he forgave you. He forgot it. So Satan brings it up. Jesus said, my sheep hear and obey my voice. Self-control is being so focused on one voice that every other voice loses its voice. So that this no longer matters. It's about this and this is the way it is. Right? So the imp says, shh, 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 shh. And instead of rebuking him and commanding him to get behind you, you know who you really are. So when he goes, boom, and pokes you, you respond, Father, I thank you so much, God. You're amazing. God, he just told me I'm worthless, and I am so worth the blood of Jesus. God, thank you. That's amazing. God, I love you. Thank you. And the imp goes back, and the boss says, he goes, I told him what you said, and he's not listening to anything. What do we do? He's screaming, Jesus. What? This always gets them. Go tell them this and this and this. All of a sudden, boom, 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 barrage attack. All kinds of stuff poking you. Not from in front, from behind. Because he's already behind you. So don't tell him to get behind you. He's already there. You better hear me on this. This is very important. This will set you free. So he pokes you again and again. Don't turn. You only have armor on your front. You don't have it on your back. Because God's got your back. Satan can whisper, but he can't do anything. Unless you listen. Because you become slaves to that one which you obey. Either a slave to obedience. What I'm talking about is obedience. God says who you are. The enemy whispers who you're not. And you proclaim who you are and thank God for who you are. You don't spend time rebuking him. Man, why entertain him? He's a liar. Anything he tells you. Man, I hear people say this. I, yeah, I know that's what the word of God says, but the devil keeps saying. <laughs> and I'm, I'm acting it out, but it's true. I know that's what God says, but the devil keeps saying. <clears throat> he keeps saying lies about you. Why would you listen to him? Because he keeps saying it. Well, here's the deal. He'll keep saying it all day long if you keep listening to what he's saying. And if he sees that it rattles you, if he sees that he pokes you, and all you do is respond like hell, he'll keep poking you and you'll keep responding like hell. And then you'll go through hell in order to get to heaven. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. You're supposed to bring heaven to earth. But believe bringing heaven to earth has to do with having putting on the mind of Christ, thinking like God. The word of God doesn't say rebuke the enemy. The word of God says take every thought captive. So a thought comes. Boom, boom, boom. So you take it captive to the obedience of the mind of Christ because the weapons of your warfare are not carnal but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, taking every thought captive because a stronghold exists here. How do you do it? Every time a thought comes, you proclaim truth. Thank you, God. Every time a thought comes, thank you, God. Before long, Satan realizes that the more he pokes you, the closer you get to God and he doesn't want to poke you anymore. I'm telling you, it's the truth. He doesn't even whisper to me about the stuff that used to happen in my life. Why would he? It never works. 
Just like Jesus, he'll wait for a more opportune time trying to come in another sneaky way where he can get you. But what if we had no closets? What if we were closetless? What if Tom wanted the microphone because it's 1133? <laughs> All right, put your hand on your head. One or two, whatever. Lord, we thank you in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you that today is going to be radical, fire carriers of you. God, I thank you that everybody here, everybody here, is going to be on fire today. Father, we thank you that we will not walk in fear. We thank you that we're wrecked from fear. We're wrecked. Fear is done. Fear is done. Thank you that we're going to walk in righteous identity, the identity of righteousness. The righteous are bold as a lion. God, I thank you for lions and lionesses. Father, thank you that today lions and lionesses are going out there and are going to wreck the enemy's plans. In Jesus' name, amen.